Mexico, a land rich in culture, history, and vibrant colors, has a side many don't see on postcards or in travel brochures. Beneath its sun-kissed beaches and bustling marketplaces lies a shadowy narrative of challenges that its people face daily. Dive with us into a journey beyond the surface, exploring the complexities of poverty, the haunting grip of crime, and the far-reaching consequences of drug trafficking. Prepare to uncover layers of Mexico's story that demand our understanding and compassion. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Basic utilities aren't always reliable. One thing you might notice if you're in Mexico is the occasional power outage. It's a common occurrence, and usually it's a minor hiccup lasting just a few minutes. But when a storm hits, be prepared for a longer outage that could last for hours. My first tip for you, always keep a stash of essentials like lamps, batteries, and candles on hand. You never know when the next outage will hit, and trust me, being stuck in the dark without your favorite show to binge watch can be a real bummer. Picture this, you're in the middle of a Zoom meeting, and suddenly, darkness descends. Not the best look when you're trying to impress your boss or coworkers, right? So, having a backup plan for these moments is always a good idea. But here's the silver lining. Most Mexican houses have gas not just for cooking, but also for your showers. So, even if the lights go out, you can still enjoy a hot shower. Now, that's a relief. Power surges can wreak havoc on your electronics, but fear not. Many Mexican households are equipped with surge protectors. These little heroes can save your laptops and computers from burning out when the electricity comes roaring back. Uneven sidewalks or no sidewalks. The sidewalks might not be your typical smooth pathways. In fact, many of them are aging, pockmarked with gaps, or sometimes they just don't exist. And if you're not keeping a keen eye on where you step, well, let's just say it's a bit of an obstacle course out here. Believe it or not, folks, the danger is real. Twist an ankle here, trip on a hidden hole there. It happens more often than you might think. And you'd be surprised how many people find themselves nursing unexpected injuries just because they weren't watching their step. So, a friendly tip, keep your eyes on the ground especially if you're exploring the charming streets of Mexico. It's not just the holes in the ground you need to watch out for. In popular expat cities like San Miguel de Allende or Ajijic, cobblestone streets are the norm. Now, don't get me wrong, they add an undeniable charm to these places. However, they can be a real challenge to walk on if you're not prepared. Mobility issues, improper footwear, or just not paying attention these charming cobblestone streets have claimed their fair share of victims. Many newcomers have reported twisted ankles and foot injuries because, well, those cobblestones aren't the most forgiving surface. My advice? If you're planning on exploring the streets of Mexico, invest in some sturdy flat shoes. Trust me, your feet will thank you later. And it's not just about fashion, it's about practicality. You never know when you might encounter an unexpected dip in the pavement lack of safety building codes. If code enforcement from the US ever ventured into Mexico, some might say it could bring the country to a standstill. Picture this, crazy wiring lurking both inside and outside many buildings. It's not uncommon, especially in older constructions. GCI outlets? Well, they're a rarity, and placing them near water sources like sinks or pools? Forget about it, it's a gamble, and not the kind you want to take. If you're someone with mobility challenges, Mexico might present a few hurdles. Ever walked into a building with stairs, but no ramp for wheelchairs? It's a common scenario. Sadly, many businesses and houses are not designed with the needs of the handicapped in mind. Imagine finding your dream rental, moving in, and discovering the electrical outlets are just for show. Talk about a shocking surprise. Here's a reality check. Not every house in Mexico adheres to the same building codes. Some builders cut corners using cheap materials or neglecting proper design considerations. That's why, if you're considering a move, we strongly recommend renting before you buy. And here's a pro tip, partner with a reputable realtor who can be your advocate in navigating the complexities of the real estate market. Trust me, it's a game changer. Now, for our friends with mobility issues, Mexico might pose some challenges, Many cities simply aren't equipped to handle wheelchairs or other mobility disabilities. It's a sad truth, but one that needs attention. As always, knowledge is power, and being aware of these issues can help you make informed decisions. 
public bathrooms are not free. If you're coming from the US or Canada, this might be a bit surprising. In Europe, paying to use public bathrooms is more common, and in Mexico, it's no different. So, always have some spare change on you. It's not just the entrance fee. Sometimes toilet paper isn't included, and that's an additional charge. The average cost for a public bathroom ranges from two to five pesos, Mexican currency, and they usually have a metal gate that opens once you pay. I've got a pro tip for you. Always keep a pack of tissues or spare toilet paper in your car or bag when you're out and about. Trust me, it's a game changer. While places like restaurants, hospitals, bus stations, or airports in Mexico often have free public bathrooms, and they usually come equipped with toilet paper, it's better to be safe than sorry. Bring that pack of tissues with you. Bribing cops. Imagine driving down a scenic road in Mexico, only to see those flashing lights in your rearview mirror. Many have faced this moment. For some, it leads to a legitimate ticket for a traffic violation. But for others, there's an unspoken alternative, bribery. Corruption within the police force is an unfortunate reality in Mexico. While the country boasts a rich culture, breathtaking landscapes, and warm hospitality, it also grapples with challenges like corruption. And let's be clear, bribery is not to be encouraged or taken lightly. Every time a bribe is offered or accepted, it undermines the very foundation of justice and perpetuates a cycle of dishonesty. While some might argue that offering a bribe is a quick fix, it's essential to understand the larger implications. By engaging in such practices, individuals inadvertently support a system where the rule of law is compromised. However, navigating these situations can be daunting. When confronted by authority figures in unfamiliar settings, individuals might feel pressured to comply with demands for bribes. It's crucial to remember that asserting one's rights and insisting on due process is essential. More often than not, standing firm and requesting a proper ticket can lead to a fairer outcome. The Sinaloa Cartel The Sinaloa Cartel, also known as the Guzman Zambada Organization, is a colossal international organized crime syndicate. Established in the late 1980s, it originated as one of several subordinate plazas under the Guadalajara Cartel. Currently headed by Ismael Zambada Garcia, the cartel operates from Culiacán, Sinaloa, and has a significant presence in Mexican states like Sinaloa, Baja California, Durango, Sonora, and Chihuahua. The United States intelligence community considers the Sinaloa cartel the largest and most powerful drug trafficking organization globally, surpassing even the infamous Medellin cartel of Colombia in its prime. Involved in the distribution of cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, fentanyl, cannabis, and MDMA, its impact on the war on drugs, international and local politics, and popular culture is immeasurable. After the arrests of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman and his son Ovidio Guzman Lopez, the cartel is now led by Ismael Zambada Garcia, known as El Mayo, and Guzman's other sons, Jesus Alfredo Guzman and Ivan Archivaldo Guzman Salazar. This shift in leadership has maintained the cartel's dominance in the Mexican drug trade, with a presence in at least 22 Mexican states, including key centers like Mexico City, Tepic, Toluca, Zacatecas, and Guadalajara, the Sinaloa cartel historically operated in the Golden Triangle, the states of Sinaloa, Durango, and Chihuahua. Now, let's shift our focus to crime in Mexico City, where the Sinaloa cartel's influence is significant. According to Numbeo, Mexico City has a high crime index, with 78.15 out of 100. Corruption and bribery are identified as major concerns, with law enforcement often compromised by ties to criminals. While crime rates in Mexico City have decreased over the years, incidents were at their lowest in 2021, according to Statista. The city, though facing challenges, is becoming safer, especially when compared to other regions in Mexico. For those planning to visit Mexico City, it's important to note that the most common crimes involve petty theft and opportunistic theft. Hotspots for pickpocketing include public transportation, especially the Metro, Centro Historico, and locations busy with tourists. To avoid falling victim to scams or theft, take precautions. Use official taxis with specific license plates, be cautious with your belongings, and stay alert. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Poverty in Mexico. Poverty in Mexico is not a new challenge. 
With high underemployment, a significant informal sector, rising prices and severe wealth inequality, the situation has worsened over the decades. Shockingly, 36% of the population is below the subsistence level, and 7.1% live in extreme poverty conditions. To put it in perspective, that's twice the population of Mexico City facing economic hardship. Understanding poverty in Mexico requires us to look beyond just income. According to Conival, the institution measuring poverty in Mexico, it's not just about money, social factors matter too. There are different types of poverty, including general poverty and extreme poverty. Conival identifies six indicators to measure poverty. Educational backwardness, access to health services, access to social security, access to decent food, quality of housing spaces, and access to basic services. So, it's not just about income, but also about education, healthcare, housing, and more. To be considered poor, having an income below the well-being line is enough, regardless of other social deficiencies. On the other hand, extreme poverty is the most precarious situation, where income is less than the food basket, and there are three or more social lacks. Poverty in Mexico is a multifaceted issue that goes beyond just economic struggles. It encompasses education, healthcare, and living conditions. The challenge is enormous, with millions living in difficult circumstances. Air pollution. According to the World Bank, air pollution is a silent killer, taking the lives of nearly 33,000 Mexicans every year. Shockingly, about 20,000 of these deaths are attributed to outdoor air pollution, hitting hardest in our towns and cities. The remaining 13,000? Well, that's from household air pollution, affecting rural communities as they cook with wood and solid fuels. Let's talk about the culprit. Tiny particles in smoke. These microscopic troublemakers infiltrate our lungs, causing chronic lung diseases, acute respiratory infections, and even more severe conditions like lung cancer, heart disease, and strokes. It's a global issue, not just confined to Latin America, contributing to a staggering 6 million deaths worldwide annually. Whether you're in the hustle and bustle of the city or the tranquility of the countryside, the story remains the same. Air pollution in Mexico is a serious problem, responsible for one in 17 deaths, making up 5.9% of all mortality in the country. It's the eighth leading cause of death, following closely behind factors like diet, obesity, high blood pressure, alcohol and drugs, smoking, and lack of exercise. So why should we care? because each statistic represents a life, a family, a community. It's time to shine a light on this dark side of Mexico, to raise awareness and take action. Let's make cleaner air not just a necessity, but a reality for all. One of the most unequal countries in the world. According to the World Inequality Report 2023, Mexico is grappling with a glaring income gap. Brace yourself for this. The top 10% of earners here make a whopping 30 times more than the bottom 50%. That's a staggering difference. On average, the top earners rake in around $63,750 annually, while the bottom half scrapes by with a mere $2,040. Over 57% of all income is gobbled up by the top 10%, leaving only 9.2% for the bottom half of the population. The middle 40% get about a third, and the top 1%? Well, they walk away with just over one quarter of the pie. Unlike some other major economies, Mexico hasn't witnessed a substantial reduction in inequality over the last century. It seems like extreme income inequality has been a persistent issue here. The report shines a light on gender inequality in labor income. Brace yourself for this one. Mexican women's share of labor income is a mere 33%. To put it in perspective, that's below the Latin America average of 35% and only a tad higher than the 28% average in Sub-Saharan Africa. In comparison, women in the United States and Western Europe enjoy a share of 39% and 38%, respectively. So there you have it, a snapshot of one of the dark sides of Mexico. It's not just about stunning landscapes and vibrant culture, there's a stark reality that needs our attention. If you found this information eye-opening, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay informed, stay curious.